Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about politics and what does that have anything to do with this channel which focuses on following Jesus in an everyday kind of way. Well, we are following Jesus but at the same time we are living in a world where politics plays a huge role in our daily life. So let's talk about how we can think through these things that are on the headlines and all over the news. Specifically, let's talk about the trial case of Rittenhouse. Okay, so the whole point of this video I'm going to sum it up in one phrase. Check your heart. And I'm talking to myself as well. Check your heart. I hear a lot of anger. And, you know, there's good reasons for being angry, right? And there's a right time and a right way to express anger, especially if it's about very important things, things that impact our country our state, our community, our church even. And so we also have to keep in mind though that the Bible is very vocal about anger as well being a weakness or even leading to sin. So we want to make sure that we are following God's example who is slow to anger. And he, Jesus has set a good example about dealing with anger when other people are coming at him we're coming at him with false accusations and we can see how he remained calm and he did not lose sight of what the father's will for his life was so we also see another situation where it was the father's will for him to be upset and show it um, by like you know, the famous uh, uh, story where Jesus was like uh, throwing tables over and he was cleaning the house, which was supposed to be a house of prayer. So um, everything needs to be appropriate, right? And in our um, scenario, we live in a world surrounded by our family and our friends and social media. <laughs> people that are watching our social media for example or um, maybe you're a youtuber and you have a platform where you can express your opinions about this case in particular so let's talk about that let's talk about specifically to the person that is just living their life and they're going to be having conversations with their family members perhaps over this thanksgiving uh, time coming up next week and I really want to encourage everyone not just about this about politics about this specific case but about everything including um, different views on within Christianity and even different views outside of Christianity I want to promote the idea the goal for us to follow the example of some very smart people that I have noticed they have this in common. Smart people <laughs> that I've observed, wise people, know when to agree with their opposition and when to disagree and to be charitable in their disagreement. So I think that most of us fall into that tendency to just pick a side and then pretty much say everything that the other side says is irrelevant, is wrong, and deserves to be mocked. So all of this could be done whatever side you tend to fall on when it comes to politics. Liberals do it to conservatives and conservatives do it to liberals. And both sides are angry with each other. And so what I'm really saying is let's grant 
the things that are true that the other side is saying. That creates unity. That creates a middle ground. And that's a good place for us to be in our daily life with just the people in our life, in our marriages, with our children, with our friends, family, as well as the people we disagree with politically. That is how our country is able to function with so many differing views. So let's talk about this case real quick. I, full disclosure, did not follow every detail, but I can share my experience. I vaguely remember hearing about this and not getting all the details, right? Because obviously the media has a way of portraying what happened. I think it happened in the year 2020. So when I heard that this trial was happening regarding something that had happened, seems like so long ago um i thought how interesting that people are so divided over this and of course that the media is portraying it in their particular way and i heard some more of the details i saw the videos and i heard people's people commenting on it mostly conservatives I tend not to follow too much the um, liberal um, media anymore, but I do think that it is valuable to make sure to hear other people's perceptions and perspectives and sure, try to weed out what is a lie and things like that. But what I find interesting from after seeing that video and hearing about how there were a lot of people that decided to show up with guns to that particular protest that was happening where the situation happened. Um, I'm not sure I have to explain, but I guess in case you haven't heard about um, the case, I'll just link an article about it in the description. So my honest impression, when I saw that, I thought, I'm not comfortable with the idea of either side. I'm not comfortable with the idea of people damaging property. And I'm not comfortable with the idea of other people feeling like they have to do the role of, for example, police officers. I'm not comfortable with the idea of people trying to take the role of um, the governing officials. So at the same time, I'm not comfortable with either side. And also, I'm not comfortable with, for example, when when there was a shooting, the first shooting that happened, other protesters trying to do the police's job again and trying to apprehend, quote unquote, the active shooter, which a lot of people are upset that they called him that. Um, they're saying that that's, that's like a heavy label that implies so many um, intentions that don't portray him as um, acting out of self-defense, which is ultimately what resulted in the trial. They ruled pretty much that he was acting out of self-defense. Okay, and here is where I think we should ask more questions. Instead of just choosing a side, let's ask more questions like, to what extent Is it really defending yourself? And to what, at what point does it turn into, I'm not just going to defend myself, I'm going to eliminate the threat entirely. So maybe we should have more discussions about that, about how far should people go when it comes to self-defense? And are there ways for us to try to protect wrongdoers and make sure that they do have to answer to a judge but like is there a way for people to be able to think hey i'm going to protect myself but i'm going to also have self-control in that very difficult situation and not go further than necessary 
that's where I'm at. I'm not choosing a side. I'm just saying, hey, both sides, both talking points are worth thinking about and talking about without so much anger getting in the middle. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with the verdict or agreeing, and I'm definitely not um, promoting the agenda of Black Lives Matter and all of the things. And of course, it's it's worth talking about how the country is heading a direction that a lot of people are afraid of, you know? Um, so I just feel like this case is not just about the case, but it has become something symbolic that both sides are adding to it. So it's become this huge, you know, thing um, where it's very interesting to hear the the both sides talking about it, adding so much to it. And of course, it's not so simple what happened in that situation. And I can't imagine being someone in that jury, having to watch all of those uh, pictures and videos and having to make a decision about this person. The last thing I want to say is that we should be careful about thinking that we know the intentions on both sides. We don't know what was really going to happen with these protesters. We can't really assume, unless I don't know a piece of information that you guys know, we can't really assume that the protesters were going to kill um, Rittenhouse, right? And at the same time, we can't um, assume the intentions of Rittenhouse. We can't assume that you know, he he was reckless on purpose or or um, that he was a racist and all of that. Uh, so I just think we should be careful with what we think that we know what was inside the mind of the people involved in this tragedy that shouldn't have happened. And I don't think we could just blame one side or the other side. Um, I think it's very interesting how influential our government leaders are when it comes to these issues. The way they caution their supporters, their protesters, if they are vocal about please protest in a nonviolent way, you know, that would, I feel like that's what's missing a lot of the time. Um, and so I think the blame could also fall on the, the political leaders that are leading in, in, in the middle of all of these, of, of this tragedy. So I just wanted to come here and share my two cents on this. Please leave your comments. If you know anything else you want to share it for us to consider, go ahead and leave that in the comments area. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.